Hello, my name is Christy Whitfield and you're listening to Mayor Bowser's Every Opportunity to Rise podcast. Welcome to season two of Mayor Bowser's Every Opportunity to Rise podcast. My name is Chrissy Whitfield, and I'm the director of the Department of Small and Local Business Development. This season, we are going to be discussing small business issues. I hopefully you already know the DSLBD is here to help small businesses grow. We are here to help business from every step of the business cycle to move from wherever they are to the next step. And we have a really great season planned for you. And today. I have invited two amazing business owners to talk to us about getting started. These amazing entrepreneurs are going to introduce themselves. Um, Ramonda, do you like these earrings? I do, actually. Oh, I they're need amazing, to get my, right? I need to get these them are too. great. <laughs> okay. Tell me about these earrings, please, and tell me about how they were made and who are you? Yes. So I am Topaz Terry. Thank you very much. Uh, and I am the uh, owner and proprietor of uh, Bicycle Trash DC. And they are made out of bicycle inner tubes. So uh, bicycle trash means that everything I make uh, is waste that I have diverted from landfills. It's waste from bicycle repairs, so flat tires, uh, tune-ups, and I've made them into wearable accessories, like what you're wearing right now. Um, and uh, I also make uh, bags, also made from inner tube. Um, so for the people that are not watching at home, I'm holding now a super cool purse that is like durable and funky and cool. It's got tassels. It's got very cool hardware on it. If you're looking on the Facebook page, it's very nice. You want one. And what's the website that you should go to if you want to buy this? Very straightforward, bicycletrash.com. Nice. Um, let me ask you this, Topaz. Yep. What's my shirt say? It says Black Books Matter, uh, mahoganybooks.com. Oh, where's that? Ah, glad you asked. Ah. I am excited to be here. Thank you for having me today. Yes. Mahogany Books is actually located in Anacostia, inside of the Anacostia Art Center, 1231 Good Hope Road, mm -hmm. Southeast, just so everybody knows. Um, but we're excited to be in Ward 8 inside of Anacostia and the community there. And it's something that my husband and I are very passionate about that we started, wow, 13 years ago in our little one bedroom apartment and opened up a physical space actually two years ago in Anacostia. And what is your name and your husband's name? Ah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Ramonda Young and my husband is Derek Young and we've been married 18 years. Oh, oh very nice. Very nice. Yes. yes. Thank you. Well, so two really different, really interesting sort of niche markets. So reading, I think reading is making a resurgence. Oh, Am I right? Absolutely. It's been phenomenal over the past three to five years, actually, that independent bookstores have increased. So if you look across the district, you'll see even a, a rise of independent bookstores as well. Um, and then actually physical books have outdone, outsold ebooks, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Uh, ebooks have kind I of did plateaued. Not know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so physical books have made a resurgence mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. it's fun to see that because mm -hmm. I've been on the other side of the spectrum where everybody was saying, you know, ebooks are it. It's, you know, nobody's mm -hmm. going to read physical books anymore. And to see that resurgence mm -hmm. and be part of it is amazing. There's, a lot of there's nothing like holding a well loved book An in your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing oh, yeah. like it. Nothing. Yeah. And, yeah, I get excited. So. <laughs> well, and I know that Bicycle Trash just opened an actual physical location. So tell us a little bit yep. about that. Uh, so I just joined the Arts Walk um, as part of Monroe Street Market in Brookland, right mm -hmm. by the Brookland Metro. Um, and I expanded space so that I could make more than just the small items that I was originally making uh, and start making bags and using up more inner tubes and trash, bicycle trash. Helping keep the landfills from yes. getting so full. Yeah. Um, and part of that was uh, a rise in popularity of being aware of climate change and also choosing to wear your values mm -hmm. um, and put your money into things that are locally produced, but also good for the environment. Well, so as two it. women who are obviously successful and winning at business, <laughs> winning, winning. <laughs> so I just want to say that one thing that I want people that are listening to this podcast mm -hmm. to know that the Department of Small Local Business Development understands a lot of things about business. And I know that when you're winning a business that you only win 
that you never do anything wrong, <laughs> that you have never made a so mistake, true. that so nothing true. has ever gone wrong, right? Nothing. So nothing. if we, anyone looks at you, you don't have a bad day and mm -hmm. nothing ever happens mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. And if they say, oh, you, it's all perfect. Yeah. Uh, so what kind of perfect advice? <laughs> Talk to us about how, how it's perfect and, um, and that you can never, you can never make a mistake in business. <laughs> ever wow. make a mistake yeah. in business. Never make a mistake um, in business. I, I, I'd like to say that I didn't start uh, my business thinking of myself as a business person. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, when I started Bicycle Trash, I was an elementary school administrator and I was doing something that um, made me feel good, mm -hmm. helped my mental health, mm -hmm. um, and was my contribution in some ways to the larger uh, global, cri global crisis you know, reality we're in right now. Um, over time, it became a business. And then I had to learn how to be a business mm -hmm. uh, and making things um, or providing something of quality is actually a very small part of what running a business is. Indeed. Uh, and that was that was a very steep and it's still a very steep learning curve for me. Well, and I think that, you know, you were also a member of the Made in D.C. program mm -hmm. and um, are right part from of the beginning. A, oh, great. Great. <laughs> and hopefully you have found that community to be supportive. Very much so. And yep. I think Bicycle Trash is in the shop Made in D.C. stores and is part of the Made in D.C. market that's in the airport. Yep. You know, so I think access to the market is important. Yes. You know, and in, all, and in all seriousness, I think that DSLBD wants to be a resource for people who are starting their business. And we understand that that road is is not linear for many people mm -hmm. Very true. Mm -hmm. and that when you want to try something new and do something different that you need to reach out for help yep and you know and dslbd has usually if are, we're not the direct resource that you know the bowser administration is helping us find ways to connect people with those resources right absolutely and i know for us at mahogany books that was a huge help when we were starting our store to be part of the great, be a recipient of the Great Streets grant was huge for us. Mm -hmm. And um, it has impacted our business in a major way to where we were able to get started and start off right. And without it, I don't think our, I'm sure that our start would not have been as successful as it was. So that was a huge help for us. And even when we had our grand opening, the mayor's office was amazing, you know, mm -hmm. Um, offering to sponsor the food that we had for the community nice. there, which was a huge help for a brand new business to get started. So it really gave us confidence to really step out there boldly because we knew we had the support of the community behind us. So mm -hmm. it's great. But to go back to your question about, oh, business is just phenomenal. <laughs> so and winning. So winning. Hashtag winning. Uh, yes, no. tell, us, tell us how, how you only win. How you only win. You're so successful. <laughs> We've got, you know, let's see again for the folks <laughs> on. We've got books and yeah. tote bags, tote bags branding, and branding and branding. And Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So never made a mistake. Never no, did anything never, wrong. Never, no. <laughs> no. Uh, but I want to touch on, you know, especially in the age of social media, and we have a great social media following, and uh, we're so proud of that. All almost thirty thousand followers right wow. now. But um, it's so funny for people to get caught up in the little box, is what I say. Mm -hmm. The profile pics, the the glamorous shots of the events, and not really think about that's only ten seconds of a full twenty four hour day. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in that snapshot, yes, it could be perfect. But before that, you know, we're thinking of, oh, man, do we have enough books for this event or we're running out of inventory or just even keeping the chatter of yourself mm -hmm. at bay. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of times the naysayers where, you know, we're looking externally, but a lot of times the chatter is inside of our minds, too, about, oh, you made a mistake or, oh, you're not going to be successful or, mm -hmm. or you shouldn't have tried that. So I think. You know, when you see those photos, mm -hmm. think about behind the scenes what that really means. There's a lot of things going on that people are dealing with and overcoming. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest thing I think with people who are successful is that they don't succumb to it. Right. We experience it, we go through it, but right. to kind of to kind of quiet that chatter oftentimes is a big thing. But yeah, it's not all, you know, glamour <laughs> shots and meeting all the celebrities that we are so blessed to have come through Mahogany Books. Um, it's a lot more mm -hmm. and it's managing a team and inspiring that team and also having that team connect to your vision. I always tell people we can hire booksellers and teach anybody how to sell a book, but I cannot teach somebody to come to our bookstore with the same values right. and intention and connection to community that my husband and I have. Right. I can teach anybody to sell, sell a book. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for people all the time that share those values mm -hmm. that um, really connects to our community and what it means to connect to culture because we specialize in books that are written by um, by, by and about people of the African diaspora. So it's a lot, but I love it. Christine, <laughs> I was going to add it. to that. The the doubt piece, I think, is the difference between running a small business mm. and, uh, and a hobby. 
Mm-hmm. I think I encounter a lot of people who are like, well, I could make that or I could do whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm, yes, yeah, yes, you could. And I and I would love it if you did. Right. Um, but to actually deal with the doubt every morning of like, am I making the right choices? Am I putting oh, yeah. thing, my eggs in the wrong basket? Um, and uh, and finding that community, like you were saying, is mm-hmm. I would say the main DC community for me. And then I also was a, a resident in the 202 Creates program, was showing up and having people who actually literally understand mm-hmm. when when things are are not winning, <laughs> um, and to give you uh, encouragement, advice, yes. um, just to be a listening ear when you need it. And that I, that was huge for me leaving. Um, just being a home-based business where I felt like I was doing a good thing, but I was very isolated Mm -hmm. to interacting with other makers and small business people and being able to pick their brains and then, and seeing their excitement in what I was doing. That was huge. Mm -hmm. That you really think this is good. Right. You know, stepping out, stepping out and doing it, Mm -hmm. you know, is a, is a leap of faith. Yes. It's a leap of faith. There's a lot of people. I know that when I had my business at curbside cupcakes, people would come up to my truck and I would often say to me, I had this idea. A lot of people have yes. ideas. Yes. And I think the difference between entrepreneurs is you know, breaking that barrier yeah. and trying. Yeah. But I do also think that because you're out there and you're representing your brand, yeah. that it is hard sometimes to say the hard things. I'm scared. Mm-hmm. I'm tired. Yes. I don't know what my next step is. And I think that it is important for business owners to know that it is okay to be scared. It is okay to be tired. And that there are resources yes. out there right. to help you. Absolutely. And that's very real to Mm -hmm. be nervous, to be scared. I know for my husband and I, it was something that we believed in and everyone around us was saying, oh my gosh, you guys are going to open up a physical bookstore. What Mm -hmm. are you doing? This is crazy. And I, both of us were very clear that even if our bookstore lasts two years, three years or five years, that's not the point. The point is that we had a vision and we were to execute on that vision. So it wasn't about the length. It was about stepping out and doing it and betting on ourselves. Mm -hmm. When you talk about, you know, just breaking away from everybody else and doing what you were supposed to do, Mm -hmm. we had to bet on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And you talk about a risk. We took out money from our 401k that we've been saving. I have a teenager who's going to college (laughs) soon. But it's either Mm -hmm. we go after this thing or we and quit playing around with it. So again, Mm -hmm. I told you we were 10 years online, which was amazing. We were able to meet reach people nationwide with low overhead. But to step out and take that money out of our 401k was huge risk. But we were betting on ourselves. Well, and stop and stop guessing. Stop wondering. Stop wondering. Now, let me ask you each this. Mm -hmm. In the time that you've been running your business, what is the most unexpected lesson that your business has taught you so far? Mm, that's good. Mm. 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 Unexpected. All right, now you guys think about that question. Will okay. I do a little commercial <laughs> break for DSLBD? <laughs> mm-hmm. Because you had talked about the Grace Streets grants. And mm-hmm. when this airs, um, let me say first that grant money in your business is uh, serendipitous and fortuitous and unlikely mm-hmm. and currently available from DSLBD. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> So mm-hmm. we have a grant fund that's currently mm-hmm. open called the Robust Retail Grant Fund, and it's available citywide. And you should check out our website, dslbd.dc.gov. And so grants of up to $10,000 are available. And if you think you have an interesting idea, you should try for it. So now back to our program. <laughs> <laughs> I would say for us, um, one, and it's a positive, actually. We thought we were going to open up this bookstore and the community would come out. And it's been amazing that even the community surrounding our store in Anacostia have come out and support. And we get people from Baltimore and Richmond that drive all the way into town to come to our bookstore. Mm-hmm. But I think the most unexpected thing is just the amount of media attention. Because I would mm. tell people we didn't open up this fabulous you know, high-end jewelry store. We didn't do high-end luxury clothing. It's books. Mm -hmm. And so to be flown to the Steve Harvey show, to be in Vanity Fair, to be in Essence Magazine for a bookstore um, has been an amazing gift to us because it also confirmed and affirmed um, our idea and our vision. But it also let us know that we weren't by ourselves and that there is a huge um, community out there that is dying to, or excitedly, I should say, Mm -hmm. (laughs) to read books and to connect with people and community. So it wasn't just physical space, but it was what that physical space represented. Right. And it was authentic conversations. It was times to connect with people and they could do that in our space. Mm-hmm. So that has been the huge surprise to us. Right. The reception of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. How about you? Um, 
I think there are so, so many moments where I cock my head and go, really, that's that's what's happening right now. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I would also say reception. Mm -hmm. I would, um, I think for me personally, a, a moment of personal growth mm -hmm. is, oh about. yes, my, um, this was the first product ever made. It's a bottle opener made out of a gear and chain. Yes. And, um, and, and maybe this is selfish, maybe this is ego, but, um, People valuing that I see things differently mm -hmm. was phenomenal for me. It really was um, identifying that I am a diverse individual and then I have a diverse perspective and then I can use that to contribute to the larger community was life changing for me, I would mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, listen, then I think, listen, I think these are beautiful notes to end on. I think that. If you are watching this and you wonder if you should start a business, <laughs> look at us. Look at them. Yeah, you can look yeah. at them <laughs> yeah. and come to our website and come see us at DSLBD. I think the answer is probably yes. <laughs> so stay involved with us, follow us, and we look forward to joining us on the rest of this conversation. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to the EOTR podcast. Please subscribe, like, and share this podcast. Join us next time to learn more about the resources available to you from the DC government. I want you to join the conversation. Use the hashtag EOTRPodDC or email us at EOTRPodDC at DC.gov. Thanks again.